Getting to space is easy, right? but getting to orbit is a hundred times harder than getting to space. Many people will wonder why the CEO of a company that has launched hundreds of vehicles into orbit is saying so. That's partly from the experience that Musk and SpaceX have had. Getting to orbit is a complicated process. That's why many aerospace companies are still struggling to find ways to achieve this goal. But there is also another reason related to the new challenge that SpaceX is facing. Launching Starship into orbit, like the vehicles, they often do. So why exactly is launching Starship into orbit more difficult than previous vehicles? And how will Elon Musk and SpaceX achieve this goal? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. To understand the difficulties of getting to orbit, we need to distinguish two definitions, getting to space and getting to orbit. According to international conventions, there is a line called the Kármán line at an altitude of about 100 kilometers above sea level. This line plays a role as a boundary between the aviation industry and the aerospace industry. When the vehicle reaches this altitude, it is considered to have reached space, and that line will be called a suborbital flight. In this region, the density of air and gravity will be very low, known as a vacuum environment. The vehicle needs to fly at a velocity of 6,000 kilometers per hour to keep it from falling back to Earth. However, the suborbital vehicle will not stay in space or fly higher. It will return to Earth when it decelerates below the minimum velocity. In contrast, to get to orbit, the vehicle will not stop in that space. It'll continue to fly until reaching an altitude of over 200 kilometers above sea level. This is the starting point of the lowest orbital band, the low Earth Earth orbit, or LEO. Once getting to orbit altitude, the vehicle will have to maintain a velocity of at least 28,000 kilometers per hour to complete at least one orbit of the Earth. Such a flight will be called an orbital flight. Thus, besides the problem of overcoming the Earth's atmosphere and gravity to get to space like suborbital flights, orbital flights will also have to overcome a distance of about 100 kilometers to achieve orbital altitude. Then, it also needs to have enough energy to generate thrust to help the vehicle maintain a minimum speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour so that it can keep orbiting around the Earth instead of falling back. In short, getting to orbit missions will be much more difficult and require more elements than getting to space missions. That's why many aerospace companies have invested a lot of money in their rockets and spacecraft, but they have not been able to fly to orbit yet. However, it's not impossible because in the past as well as in the present, many rockets and spacecraft have been launched into orbit, such as Vostok of the former Soviet Union, Soyuz of Russia, Long March and Shenzhou of China, Apollo, and Saturn V of NASA. But what about SpaceX? Well, they've already launched a lot of rockets and spacecraft into orbit. In September of 2008, with the successful launch of the Falcon 1 rocket, SpaceX became the first privately funded fully liquid-fueled rocket to reach orbit. Then, on May 30th of 2020, SpaceX became the first private company to send humans into orbit by launching a Crew Dragon spacecraft on a Falcon 9 rocket. Falcon Heavy has also been continuously launched from 2018 to the present, but not as often as the Falcon 9. However, we're still scratching our heads over why launching Starship into orbit is a problem for SpaceX. What is the difference between Starship and their previous vehicles? The reason is probably because of the greater expectation that Starship is carrying, the colonization of Mars. That task is much more difficult than those of previous vehicles, like launching satellites, flying to the ISS, or NASA commissioned missions, and more. It is designed to send humans to Mars. To meet its higher ambitions, Starship must undergo a lot of changes compared to previous vehicles, such as mass, payload materials, engines, propellant, integrated technologies, and more. Mass has to be the most obvious factor. The greater the mass of an object, the greater the thrust required to lift it. This is well proven in Newton's second law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration, where the force will be directly proportional proportional to mass if acceleration is the same. When comparing this aspect, the aforementioned vehicles cannot match the Starship. Specifically, Starship has a total mass of 5,000 tons, which is about 10 times heavier than the Falcon 9 
around 5 times compared to Falcon Heavy, and about 1.7 times compared to the Saturn V, the heaviest rocket in the world in the past. Additionally, Starship will have to carry a much larger payload than their previous vehicles, including crew and cargo. It is especially designed to send about 100 people or about 1,000 tons to Mars in the future. Other changes with new materials, engines, propellants, and other technologies can also cause risks and problems during Starship's orbital launch. The use of stainless steel alloys, Raptor engines, liquid methane, and an orbital fuel supply system has never been seen in SpaceX's previous vehicles, so no prior evidence or experience can prove that these changes will be successful. The launch support system is also a factor that caused difficulties in Starship. Starship orbital launches. Although it's considered one of the most modern launch systems in the world, it hasn't been fully completed and many parts are still yet to be upgraded. The incompletion can cause many problems in the launch process, such as in the last launch of S-24 and B-7. The launch pad below the orbital launch mount was damaged due to the excessive thrust of the Raptor engines. Its debris not only damaged the surrounding facilities, but also affected the engines, causing some of them to fail after launching. That means if SpaceX wants Starship to achieve the same performance as its previous vehicles, they need to make many improvements and upgrades in many aspects, as well as invest a lot of time in order to take necessary steps and tests. But while we're on the topic, what notable upgrades has SpaceX made with Starship and other infrastructure? The first of these many changes takes place in the number of engines. Currently, the latest prototype of Starship include 33 engines in the booster or first stage and 6 engines in the Starship or second stage with three vacuum engines and three sea level engines. However, it seems that Elon Musk and SpaceX will make some changes. In the images posted on Twitter, the second stage of Starship is expected to add three vacuum engines, increasing the total number of engines from six to nine. Thus, the thrust of the second stage will increase significantly, helping it to work better in a vacuum environment. Along with the increase in the number of engines, the fuel reserve will also increase. It's expected that the propellant tanks will be stretched by 25% to store an additional 30 tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and liquid methane. This increase in fuel reserve will help provide enough fuel for the nine engines to maintain thrust during orbital flight. The next changes are related to the engines version. The current Starship prototypes are still using the Raptor 2 engine but it'll likely be replaced by the Raptor version 3 soon enough. According to the overall test results, the Raptor 3 will be 18% more powerful than the Raptor 2. Moreover, the weight of the Raptor 3 will be lower than the Raptor 2 by 200 kilograms, with the Raptor 2 at 1,600 kilograms. Therefore, replacing the Raptor 2 with Raptor 3 not only helps increase thrust, but also reduces mass. SpaceX also pays attention to the stability of the engines. Any incident such as engine failure or explosion during the launch can affect the vehicle's ability to reach orbit. In the last launch of the S-24 and B-7 configuration, failures occurred and caused some engines in the Super Heavy booster to not work after it launched. SpaceX made many changes to the engines after that launch, notably changing the hydraulic unit system with a new electric TVC system and reinforcing the engine's hot air ducts. These changes will make engine activation faster, safer, and more reliable. Next, a new design change on the Super Heavy Booster was made with the addition of hot staging. Its main function is to disperse and reduce the heat and pressure of the second stage when it activates the engine, allowing the Starship to activate the engine while it is still sitting on the booster, preventing damage to both the stage and the separation process. This change also helps the launch process to take place continuously, maximizing performance and limiting operational periods without thrust. Starbase upgradation is also focused by SpaceX. Besides improving the infrastructure at the Massey's test site, building Megabay 2 and the new Star Factory at the production site the most notable changes probably took place at the launch site, with the completion of the deluge pipe system and the water-cooled steel plate system below the OLM. All parts of the system have been connected and are undergoing 
testing. This system will help strengthen the launch process of upcoming missions, especially helping increase the safety of the infrastructure at the launch site, mainly to avoid possible destruction during liftoff, such as with the last launch of the S-24 and B-7 configuration. So there you have it. All of these changes will further strengthen the goal of sending the first Starship into orbit. However, there's still a lot of work that SpaceX has to do toward that goal. And as Musk said, getting to orbit will be difficult. But if they can get Starship to orbit, SpaceX will again create a new record for the world aerospace industry. At that time, the frontier that is the Earth's orbit will no longer be their target. Instead, it'll become the starting line for the next missions in the future. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress happening over at SpaceX. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.